I think we're all here now. And we'll go ahead and give it a start. Thank you for your patience while we're getting set up. Uh, my name is Karen Pierce, and I am one of the housing counselors here at Access. And we're going to start with some housekeeping items. If you have your cell phones, if you would please put them on silent, because um, they do typically go off during our meetings pretty regularly, mine included, I checked. And um, if you need water, there's a table back here with cups and water on the table. The restrooms are right here. If you need to get up and move around, feel free. Uh, we are filming today, so we just wanted you to know that we're doing our best to protect your privacy and uh, we don't address anybody by name, but uh, you're welcome to contact us directly with questions that may be identifying for you after the session today. So what we're doing today, ACCESS is known in the community. We are a community action agency and most of the people in the community know us for our, our uh, food program. The nutrition program is what a lot of people know access for since 1976. We also have uh, medical assistance. We, we rent out equipment to those in need um, for no cost with it coming back to go out to others when, it's, when the use is complete. We have energy assistance for those that are income eligible. We have a weatherization program that kind of goes hand in hand with that. And then there's our housing programs, and there's a multitude of those programs. So we have a, a homeless veterans program, and we have education for home buyers, for ready to rent. We have this program, which is what you're here for, which is the default and foreclosure prevention. And that seems to be the bulk of where the focus has been in the past several years for housing as far as needs in nationwide but especially in our valley so we're going to talk a little bit about this program so this we have housing counseling here at access and it used to be this program was rooted in home buyers education and down payment assistance so a lot of focus was placed there to assist home buyers that were new or wanted to find out as much information as possible up until 2007 2008 that is where most of our focus was and then along came the foreclosure crisis with the economic conditions that brought that on. So that's where most of our focus has been since 2007 and 2008 is in foreclosure prevention. And there are a lot of variables to that, a lot of layers to that, and the folks that we deal with are at different places as far as goals and where they are in the process. So we're gonna hit some of those broad contexts today and then when we meet with you face to face, we're going to talk in depth about your individual circumstances and how this comes to play for you. So the foreclosure cri crisis heated up more than any of us anticipated, and I've been doing this for 31 years. So this was a big surprise and much worse than any of us expected. And the state recognized that there was a problem here in Oregon and came out with a Senate Bill 558, which was what most people here now are here for, which is the Oregon Foreclosure Avoidance Program. They have now brought to the table the lenders, banks, mortgage companies, or interchangeable terms, and the homeowners to try to work with a facilitator to find a solution, and that's what we're going to try to help you figure out. So our role in that is to look at your situation and compare it to the options that are out there and try to match your goals up with that and figure out what path you, you choose to be on. So we're gonna talk some more about that. Our role in counseling, we are here for informational purposes. We have a great deal of expertise and a whole lot of information we've gathered for this purpose. We are not tax advisors, we are not attorneys. We are not going to do the work for you. We will assist you once you t identify what path you're pursuing and we'll give you input based on that choice. We will not do the work for you. You need to want your home more than we want you to want your home, which is a lot. But we will assist you in that journey as best we can. So do, we will make those recommendations for attorneys and tax advisors frequently and we'll give you the specifics why once we've identified them. So some of the benefits of counseling is when you're in the heat of all of this, it's different. And 
when somebody neutral can look at the big picture for you and help you stay within the path that you're on, there's been a lot of value found to that. So there have been studies done by HUD for the home ownership as well as foreclosure prevention counseling and those were published in May of 2012 and they showed that homeowners that have worked with housing counselors in the foreclosure prevention process almost 70 percent of the time have avoided foreclosure so what that measure is going to mean for you might be different but they found that working together in a partnership like that there's a lot of benefits so that's what we wish to provide to you it's not required other than for the foreclosure avoidance program for the state of Oregon. They do require the counseling. We're just going to hope to prove our worth to you and if you want to check out why this study is here for you to go look into and see what some of those statistics are. But we're going to give you an impartial view from that perspective of where you're at and what you, where you want to go and what may be available to help you get there along the way. We'll give you a neutral perspective with a whole lot of expertise behind that and we'll give you more documentation than you've ever wanted to see to try to show you why when we've proposed something. So that's what we hope to do. It's an incredibly complex process that you're going through which most people have figured out by the time they get to us and we'll help interpret that for you to help you understand what things are and what they mean process-wise, document-wise, program-wise, so that you have all the information that you need to make a, an informed decision about what you're doing. We will advocate on your behalf if you get stuck, and many people by the time they've gotten to us are very frustrated and have been stuck, sometimes for a long time, sometimes multiple times. We will help you get unstuck and see if we can get you moving again. But we are not going to be the decision maker. We can't tell you, yes, the modification you want is yours. It's not our role. We won't even allude to that being our role. But we'll give you information on why we think you're a good candidate. And that's going to be based on a very thorough analysis of your income, your expenses, the documentation that's required to support all that, and the various options that might be there or may, might not be there if you've decided, I really want this. And we have to explain, well, because of this, that may not be feasible, but we'll, we'll go through that with you. So we'll talk about the various options, and there are a lot of different options to avoid foreclosure, and we're going to hit the, the broad context of many of them today. So what is your situation? Most people that have come to us have come to us because there's been some sort of hardship, not simply because they don't want to pay on their mortgage anymore because of their equity position. That's happened. I mean, almost everybody has experienced negative equity in this crisis, and it's not for us to judge for those that don't want to face that anymore. But the bulk of the people that come to us are seeking a solution because of a hardship. Their income's down, their expenses are up, something happened. There was a divorce, there was a medical situation, they've lost their job, their hours were cut back, they've been reemployed, but their income's lower. There's something that happened, and you're at a place now we need to see if there's another way to address the affordability of your home. So we're going to look at that through many different ways. There's a waterfall that your lender, bank, mortgage company, all those interchangeable terms, is looking at in some way, shape, or form this. They are going to look at you, are you able to keep your home? Are you sitting on a pile of money and you could just pay it to them and reinstate your mortgage if you fell behind? That's rare, it happens, but it's rare, usually because of an inheritance or something, as someone was able to reinstate their mortgage. Um, if that's not possible, maybe your situation was short-lived. You lost a job, but you found one a, a few weeks later, but you fell behind, and you can't get caught up. So now you could if they would help you, and they may be looking at a repayment plan to cover what was falling behind on you might pay a little extra in a repayment plan over your scheduled payments to be able to get the loan caught up and back on track. So that's usually a very short-term option. Um, if you didn't fall behind, you would benefit by a lower payment just simply because interest rates are phenomenal. I and mean, I've been doing this since 1983 and we haven't seen them at this level. So maybe a refinance would be an alternative because your loan is current and you could refinance and qualify based on income and credit. But the greater number of people, that's not where they're at. Uh, forbearance would be also an alternative to keep your home. 
It is also a very short-term solution. It is usually for a couple where somebody passed away and there's life insurance. Once the policy comes in, the loan can be caught up and the payments can continue. Or somebody had a medical situation that is expected to be very short-lived and once they get back to work and their full pay is coming in, then they can resume making payments again. So they just need a very short term to be able to deal with their issue and get back on track. The greater number of people that come to us, they're looking for modification of their loan terms. They've had a, an event that triggered them to fall behind. They've resolved that event, but they're in a different place than where they were when they took out their loan and they cannot afford it any longer. They need to modify their terms to something they can sustain where they are now. And that's the bulk of who comes to us with a goal identified as home retention. There are those that will come to us that either wish to exit or cannot qualify for these options and will be offered exit options. So those are transition options, exit options, also multiple ways to accomplish that. If you need to sell your home, you simply put it on the market, find a buyer and on your way. You don't need to do anything other than go through that process. Because of the economic situation, what it's done to our market, many people with the negative equity are facing a short sale if they're going to exit. And that is meaning they will get less from the net amount of the purchase price than what is owed and they're short to pay off their loan. So they will, in this case, need to market the home, get the buyer and then get the lenders and or insurance, whatever's involved with the financing type, the approval to accept less than what's owed and figure out how they're gonna deal with the rest. So that's a short sale. If someone has attempted to sell and could not or is eligible for a streamlined version of this, then they could potentially be looking for a deed in lieu of foreclosure. And what that is, is simply deeding the property back to the lender and you're on your way. And there could be variables within that, time to move, money to assist, to relocate if necessary, but you're giving the deed to the home and you're on your way. And then lastly, some people, the solution is foreclosure. That's how their situation is going to be addressed, to go through the process and into foreclosure. And then there's a couple of different ways that foreclosure is handled in the state, which we're going to talk about. So foreclosure can be very trying. The process of avoiding foreclosure can be very trying. When we are on the phone trying to work with your servicers, as I'm sure you've encountered if you've attempted this on your own, you're never really sure who your decision maker is. How do you get to the right person? Who can I talk to to get my answers? With all of our resources, we also sometimes wonder who that person is because they're changing all the time and it's a moving target. So it does get confusing. We do try to introduce some levity into this very challenging situation and try to find odds when we're calling Bank of America or Chase or Wells Fargo to see if we can get some answers, but we will assist you in that process. So the servicer is who you're making your payments to, and that's who you're calling, and that's your point of contact in all of this. The decision maker may not be ultimately your servicer. It could potentially be the investor on the loan. So a lot of times you call and you say, we need to find out what the investor is gonna do, or we're waiting for the investor. So that could be Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, FHA, VA, USDA. There's, there's a multitude of others that may be behind the scenes involved in this. So we're familiar with those guidelines. We're familiar with how to pair those up. And when we're being told that we need to get an investor approval, and we know that's really not the case, those guidelines are standardized, we know that too. So we'll help you get past those situations when we run into them. And there's been recognized problems in that issue and the federal government established the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau as the overseeing regulatory agency for a lot of these issues. So now there are very set mortgage servicing standards that they regulate and enforce and we have not always had that. So we're encouraged about that and if you stopped at the table on your way in and happened to see this booklet that tells you about the new mortgage servicing standards boiled down. Ours is 104 pages. We gave you the abbreviated version, 
but this will give you an idea of, of what the expectation is of your servicer when you are requesting assistance and what the time frames are, what letters you're supposed to receive, and what options are supposed to be looked at for you. So the game has changed a little bit and it's more in your favor now. So we'll assist you with that in, in deciphering many of those things. We understand it's still a challenge. It's not a perfect world, but it's better than it was when I got into this in 2009. So we'll give you those resources and assist you depending on what you've elected as your path to be able to follow. Some of you have already started this process and may be at a different juncture than others. Some have not done anything yet and we'll figure out where you're at and we'll assist you from that point and let you know that maybe you want to redirect, maybe you need us to try to push things through a little bit for you, or you're doing great, just keep on going and we'll be your cheerleader. We'll figure out what that role is, what you need from us, and we'll identify that. But ultimately, you are the point person in that process. So we will advocate when you get stuck. Advocacy means a lot of things. Advocacy means that if we're able to, we may attend your resolution conference on your, and go with you if we can, and you don't already have representation with an attorney so that we're not, we're using our resources widely because they're stretched very thin. Uh, advocacy could be that this denial letter that you receive makes no sense whatsoever. What do you mean this is the income they used for you? What I see is a whole different number, so let's find out why. And we will advocate on your behalf to get to the right channels at your servicer to get answers. And if we get stuck, we'll find out who your investor is and who we can go to there. And if we get stuck there, we will find out who's regulating them. Will it be the U.S. Treasury? Will it be the FHA National Servicing Center? Will it be the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau? We'll keep going up the ladder until we get where we need to go. And we'll assist you with that process. It's very simple. The, you have some very encouraging people behind you at the Oregon Department of Justice and at the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau that want to help you. And we'll point you in the direction of, of how to get that assistance. But we don't use that arbitrarily. We want to identify a solid situation and say, hey, you know, on your guidelines on page 86, paragraph 9b, it says, I don't think they did that. Can you help us? And we want to identify very specific circumstances so that you get true assistance. We know you, some people are angry and they want to complain to the whole world. And sometimes I have those days where I want to do that too. But I have to take a step back and bite my tongue. And there are some holes in it because I've had to do that a lot. But we want to use these resources wisely and get to the right place. So we'll advocate for you. If we feel that the advocacy needs to be in the form of legal assistance, we're going to point you that direction. It could potentially, if you're income eligible, be free assistance that has been set up for the Oregon Foreclosure Avoidance Program. So they, are give, they have attorneys throughout the state that are working with homeowners that are in this program if they're income eligible. So if you think this might help you grab this off the table, these cards are there. And if you're outside the income level for the state's specific attorneys, they have arranged pro bono attorneys in areas where there's a high level of foreclosures and we are one of them. And though they've also got reduced rates through some of those attorneys as well as through the Oregon State Bar Association. They'll refer you to attorneys that are familiar with what you're dealing with and direct you to them for the proper assistance. So reach out for that resource if you need it. So we'll also point to you, there's so much information, we're going to try to get you to other programs that we identify. For example, Oregon Homeownership Stabilization Initiative was established with hardest hit funds for the state of Oregon because we had a large number of unemployed and homeowners facing foreclosure. So they came up with different programs. One of them is the Home Rescue Program, which is about to end. So if you haven't applied yet, then that deadline is June 25th. Check that out fast. If you have need of this program, which is really designed for homeowners that have faced reduced income, unemployment, etc. So grab this flyer off the table if you think that might be a benefit to you. So we'll make sure we match you up with different programs. And it may be mortgage related, it may also be community related. It could be you need the assistance of senior disabled or there's an agency for that. Maybe it's nutritional support, there's an agency for that. 
if it's Job Council, if it's any of these complementary agencies throughout the valley, we don't necessarily all do the same thing, but we're aware of each other and we'll get you those resources and make sure you know how to find them and get you on your way. So that's how we advocate for you. The uh, facilitation, I know I emphasize that we want to do it with you. We don't want to do it for you. We can't. You have to want this more than we do. Um, but we will assist you in getting on your way. So we'll assist you with getting the workout financial hardship package request to your servicer and identify what you're requesting because we speak the lingo and you may not. So we'll translate the lingo and we'll help you through that process. We will follow up when you get stuck and continue to try to facilitate that process. And we'll check in with you periodically to see how you're doing in your part and ask that you check in with us so we know where you're at. So whether it ends with the foreclosure avoidance program and you get your resolution or it continues and you still need your counselor's assistance, we're here for you. So we will work with you till you hopefully find a successful outcome. So we will facilitate that process with you. We understand all the different guidelines. We understand the different agencies involved and we will get you in touch with them. It gets confusing along the way. Sometimes the players change and we feel like we're running down the yellow brick road with the Oz team and we're trying to figure out where we're going, but now at least you'll have company on your way. So we'll figure out if we need to be heartless or if we need to try to find somebody with a brain. But that's what our role will be. So the information that we need, as far as counselors go, you, a lot of you have brought a lot of paperwork today. I know that it seems crazy, redundant, ridiculous in some aspects, but it's of extraordinary value because we can't do our job without it. And we need the most up-to-date information that we can get. So depending on where you are, you may have already given that package to your servicer, but it's been three months. And you may have given it to the state for this program, but it's been two months. We need it today, and we need the most up-to-date information so that we can keep you moving with your servicer and not have you immediately go in and be stuck. So we also can't need to an analyze that information to be able to tell you what's available. And what your service is looking at may not be the same as what the state was looking at for their program. We're looking at all of the options that we need to discuss based on your circumstances. So the state program is looking at specifically how do you get through your resolution conference? But that's not all of your picture necessarily. Your lender wants to know, okay, what do they want? What do we got? Let's go. But we want to know what kind of loan did you get? Was it done properly in the beginning as far as fee structure? Were you, did you get, were you, were you given a predatory loan? Did somebody charge you extraordinary fees? They're, your service is not going to ask you about that. They certainly don't want to be involved in that process. The state doesn't necessarily approach it from that level, but we want to know so that we can make sure that you're aware going forward where you're at. So we want to interpret the paperwork that for the for the programs that you already have received, so the existing loan terms, first mortgage, second mortgage, all of the situations so that we can help you. If you don't give it to us, we can't help you. So that's why we ask for what we ask for. And we need it. We don't ask for it just because we like a lot of papers. And we have a lot of papers, but we do need those papers. So going through this process, we're gonna educate you on what you had, we're gonna educate you on what's available, and you're gonna tell us what you've chosen and then you're going to be on because we'll get you on your path and you are going to run with it from there till we see where we need to re-engage with you. The process, the, your key to success will be patience, which is very difficult, I understand, for many of you at this point. But you need to keep good records. You may be building your own case and you may need the assistance of the Oregon Department of Justice and the Attorney General at some point. If you come in and rant, they're sorry for you. They know how frustrating it is, but they won't be able to do a whole lot for you. But if you come in with your documentation and your notebook where you've logged the date, the time, the person you spoke with, and the general gist of what you talked about, if you have the employee number of the person you spoke with that told you that you were approved for a modification but the letter, letter never came, this is a trail we can follow. And if you keep that trail for us, it, it's more meaningful for you. So we do request that you keep a notebook going forward. If you have it, kudos to you. A lot of people have been doing that already. If you don't start today, it's important. 
and keep track of it. If nothing else, it's, it'll keep you on track of what you're calling for and what you're hearing because sometimes when they start talking, you lose it when it makes no sense and they're repeating something that's ridiculous that you've heard four times already. Note it down, let us know, and we'll see how we can help you with that. So the patience is important. If you have two people that are dealing with this, the person that's more patient should make the calls possibly than the other person. And when they've had enough, new, new team player engages and c continues because you've got to call your servicer to make sure that you're moving forward to a resolution if it doesn't happen sooner in a resolution conference. So be as patient as you can. Comply immediately with any document request that you get from the state if you're in the resolution conference, from your servicer, even if you've done it before. Because the number one reason for a loan request for workout to be canceled is because you didn't comply with, with a paperwork request. So the, the days used to be we wondered if the fax machine everybody was faxing to fed straight into the shredder. It's not that bad anymore, but there are still issues with the paperwork getting through and there are delays. These are large organizations most people are dealing with and tens of thousands of people handling this documentation. It's, it, there's confusion on the other end and that's what you're dealing with. Like it or don't like it, it's what it is. So just do the best that you can to work within it and keep moving forward. So be patient, give them what they need. If they've asked you for it before and you're supplying the same Social Security Award letter five times in the same year and they only give you one every year, then let us know and we will help you get past that and moved into a place where it will hopefully get reviewed. So be patient, keep those paper, that documentation and get reliable information. There's still people out there that say, neighbor's been sitting in their home for five years, hasn't made a mortgage payment. Other neighbor just got a offer and they're forgiving 200,000 off their mortgage and their interest rate's now 2%. I want that deal. I want that deal too, but it doesn't exist for many people. And the hearsay out there is very prevalent. So make sure that the information you're getting is accurate based on your individual circumstances and from a reliable resource. There's a whole lot of information out there that is not real reliable and be careful what comes in. Just ask your counselor, because we'll help you identify, and, and is it real, is it not real? This stuff is changing and coming through all the time, and it is incredibly in-depth and incredibly involved. So there's a recent brochure that is also on this back table that the Oregon Department of Consumer and Business Services published, and it talks about the various options available in foreclosure and gives you a realistic spin of what's real. So I would recommend that you pick that up if you haven't already. There are other online resources that we use very frequently, and some are reliable, some are not. There are scams like you wouldn't believe. When somebody receives a public notification that you're in foreclosure, it's public. And there are those that will try to benefit from your hardship. And some of them are not very nice, and we don't like them. Um, so we're going to talk about a video that we're going to play towards the end of this that talks about some of the situations that people run into. Some of this mail that you receive is incredibly official looking and tells you exactly what you want to hear. And sometimes it's too good to be true. So if you receive anything, run it by your counselor, let us know, and we'll translate it. You get some good stuff and some of it is just totally bogus and we've turned them in and thankfully the Department of Justice follows up on these and they will hopefully chase them out. So we really would like to hear from you if you receive anything and let us know because these offers frequently there's no validity to them. Sometimes you get something, you've been receiving so much of this stuff that even the real offers no longer look good. Stay in communication with us and get it to us and we'll let you know what's real and what isn't. So tr try to watch out for the information that's coming in because as soon as you hit the foreclosure process, there are public notifications and the mail will come. Everybody wants to sell your home for you. Everybody wants to save your home for you. Everybody wants to give you something wonderful. And there isn't too much out there that's for nothing. So just be aware. The scammers try to charge, and we're going to talk about that some more later, and there are very specific circumstances where they're allowed to do that, 
and where they are not, where they are not. And there are licensing requirements to do what we do in the state of Oregon outside of an agency like ours. So we'll talk about that some more too. The foreclosure process is very challenging. Uh, a lot of times by the time someone gets to this point, they've had enough. They just either want the answer or tell me I can't do anything and send me on my way. But let me know one way or the other. And that's what we're gonna try to help you figure out. And then once you get to that process, what do you expect? So in Oregon, it used to be that all of our judicial foreclosures were handled in the non-judicial foreclosure process, meaning in your deed of trust, which was the document that created the lien on your property, you already have very set terms. If you don't pay, this is what happens. They're gonna file the acceleration notice. If you don't pay us, we're going to accelerate your loan and call it due. It's due because you haven't paid. And then we are going to issue a notice of default or they might be combined. And you are behind on your payments and we are going to take the next step. So since the Senate Bill 558 came into play, they have to go through the process of offering you the resolution conference first before they can start that process. But then they will move into the next process once they've completed that, usually. So you usually have a non-judicial foreclosure in the old days. In the new days, judicial foreclosure became more prevalent. Judicial foreclosure is simply they're suing you because you owe them money. And you're gonna receive a summary and a complaint and notifying you you're being sued and the amount that they want to get and the complaint that the money is due them. So there is 30 days from the time that notice is given to you for you to respond if you're going to. Some people do, some people don't, most people don't. Um, if you respond, you are either going to admit that you owe the money, you're gonna go pay your current filing fee is $505 to say, yeah, I owe you the money, what do you want? Blood from a stone, what are you gonna do? Most people don't pay the $505 to admit that they owe the money, but that would be a response. Or you will deny that you owe the money and say, no, I don't owe that money. It's not my mortgage. Or you're gonna challenge the amount that they say is owed, which is where most people are going to go in and hire an attorney at that point because you're well into the legal land if you're gonna pursue that and go fight it. So you're looking for a foreclosure defense attorney if you're going to respond typically. You can do it on your own. We do not recommend it but you will get in there with an attorney and file your response and go from there. So one of three things, admit, deny, or challenge is typically what you're gonna do if you receive the summons and complaint. If you do nothing, then the 30 days goes out and the next step will be your servicer is going to notify the court that they want the judge to issue a writ of execution and order the sale of your home so they can sell it and pay off as much as they can of what's owed. So from that point in this timeline, we really don't know how long it's gonna take. It depends. It depends on how many other cases they're trying to process. At what level of readiness is your servicer when they do this? Presumably they're ready if they filed it. Maybe the court doesn't think they are, I don't know. But there may be some back and forth before it gets to that point where the judge actually signs the writ of execution and orders the sheriff's sale. So maybe it's gonna be three or four months and maybe it's gonna be who knows how many months or years depending on what's going on. So we can't really define exactly how long that process is gonna be, but there's one sure location that you can go to which is the OregonSheriffs.com to find out if they've ordered the sale and your property will be listed there. So it will not slip by you, you will receive notices and there is time that goes by so it's not someone knocking on your door saying get out with no notice, you will have notice. And we encourage you to watch that website for the dates if you get to that point where you know you can't pay, you haven't been able to resolve it, the judicial foreclosure has begun and these forms are coming saying that it's going to sell. Then now you follow through and make sure that you're ready to go when that day comes. And we're gonna talk about one-on-one, -on -one, some of the things to look out for if you're at that point as far as when do you go? When do you get ready? Can I just say I'm done and leave? And we'll talk about the reasons why you may or may not wanna do that and go through that in depth with you. 
So the non-judicial foreclosure process is basically gone, but it might come back. We don't know. It's more set forth than this. This one gives you these forms. You receive the notices and then you're done. This one is very straightforward, the non-judicial foreclosure. You're going to get very specific forms, a specific date, and it's auctioned on the courthouse steps. You can go see when it's done if you want to, either one actually, but that one is more structured and typically is completed within 120 days if your servicer elects to choose that process. So at the end of the 120 days roughly, then you need to go. If you don't, you will be evicted and there is not much time at that point for you to go if you've let it go all the way down to the end. So we encourage you to stay alert, be aware, open your mail, open your mail, open your mail. And I know you get bombarded with a lot of information, but you need to engage or it will s sneak up and surprise you, but the notices were there. So the judicial foreclosure, non-judicial foreclosure, if you're going to fight it, you're likely in the land of an attorney and I am not an attorney. They're gonna get me a t-shirt that says it, I am not an attorney, uh, but we know when to recommend them for you. So now we're to the, one of the most busy programs that we're dealing with right now, which it was instituted by Oregon Senate Bill 558. That replaced Oregon Senate Bill 5, 1552 which unfortunately only covered the non-judicial foreclosure process. And when the servicers began using the judicial foreclosure process, that bill didn't really help us a whole lot. So thankfully they got that resolved and came up with the new Senate bill which addresses both foreclosure processes. So 558 came along and we are very supportive of that as a tool for the homeowners that are facing what you're facing to be able to utilize to get a resolution. Now there are rules that need to be followed and there are players that are following these rules and it's much better as far as getting answers and trying to feel like something's happening instead of sitting in limbo. So you get a notice of resolution conference if your servicer has elected to start on this process and that was given to you as a right because the Oregon Department of Justice and your legislature understood this is a very frustrating process and the rules are not being followed. So they've come up with these rules so that hopefully your frustration will not be so great. And that began in August of 2013. So you get a notice of resolution because of your, uh, your servicer electing to do this or because you know, uh oh, I'm not gonna be able to make my next mortgage payment. I better get in there and get some help. And you can come see a housing counselor and we can an review your situation and say, yeah, they're in imminent danger of default. And then you can choose to participate in that program even if your servicer has not elected to offer it to you. If your servicer elects to offer it to you, you have to accept and then you have time frames. You must respond to the notice within a certain number of days. You must pay your fee, and that would be $175, or it can be reduced if you're income eligible to $50, and then provide paperwork. We all need paperwork. So the documentation that they require, if we already have an established case file with you, will assist you with providing it to the state. If you have already received a notice and have a date that's coming to provide that documentation by, and it's before you're gonna meet with your counselor or sh within a day or two after, you need to get your documentation in directly. And they've already told you in that notice how to do that. But they need their paperwork and we'll need ours as well. So if we, uh, if we have duplicate paperwork and you've gotten to us first, we'll assist you with that. But if you haven't, you need to get it to them but they will now give you the right to get a sit down with your servicer and a decision maker to try to find a solution. And we feel that is extremely valuable and worth the price. So extra effort is, is uh, I believe it's worthwhile even if you have to give us all paperwork three times, but it'll get you on your way. So the attendees at the resolution conference, you have um, multiple players that are involved in this process. Not all of them are gonna be at the conference. So you have mediation case managers is the person that's the coordinator for the program. So that's who the state has identified as 
the appointment setter, the document gatherer, the fee collector, and then they pass these to the appropriate parties and they are the communication hub for this specific process. Then you have another term, beneficiary. So that's your lender, servicer, mortgage company, bank, they're all interchangeable. But for the resolution conference, beneficiary is your lender and your servicer. So that per they have to send in a live body to give you a decision on what your, re your workout review results are. And they are in Ohio, and they are in Florida, and they are in Texas, so they very rarely send the live body. I've never seen one. They send an attorney who is the beneficiary's agent to attend your resolution conference. So that's who the actual live body will be in the room is their attorney that they'll send in for that. And then on the phone will be the full authority person from the mortgage company to help that process. Homeowners are grantors in that process. That's your label. You are a grantor. And that's part of a triangle with a facilitator being the third point. So if you have an attorney, you can bring them down with you. If you are in the midst of a sale working with a realtor with an offer pending, you may want to bring them with you, but they'll have to agree to have that person attend. If we can, we absolutely want to be there with you, but for our capacity, we may not be able to, but we will make sure that you're prepared before you go with the information specific to your circumstances that we've discussed in advance one-on-one. -on -one. And then behind all that, a regulator, which we didn't always have. We have the Department of Justice who is following the outcomes and the statistics of this program and making sure the rules are being followed. And for that, we are also extremely grateful that we have that resource. So on the resolution conference day, you will have three main points in the triangle. So you'll have you, your attorney, us, whatever in your section will be there. You will have your lender, who will be usually the voice on the phone, and their attorney in the room with you. And then you have a neutral third party, which is called a facilitator, mediator is another term that you'll hear frequently, that is helping the two parties move forward. They are impartial, they are neutral, they are not a decision maker. The only decision maker is supposed to be on the phone. And what you typically find is in order to get a decision, you need to have completed the review process with the lender prior to your resolution conference. If that has not completed yet, then they will likely set your date out and you'll come back after they've had the chance to be able to complete that review is what we've seen most frequently in these. That's how it really works. We had hoped that we'd be sitting there with you and finally get to hammer out some real numbers at the table. But that's a lot of paperwork and very specific information that needs to be reviewed in depth. And that process needs to take place before the decision can be rendered. So very rarely is the decision going to come through the phone unless they really did it before that point and they didn't have a chance to notify you first. That's when we've seen the decision that way. But you've got three main points, you, the lender, and the neutral party who is your facilitator. So exclusions to the Oregon Foreclosure Avoidance Program, there are servicers that don't have very many foreclosures and if they have had less than 175 of them, they can request to be exempt from the program. They can still choose to participate, but they have the right to opt out because they obviously are working things out with their clients if they aren't filing that many foreclosures. So the credit unions we frequently don't see in there. Sometimes they choose to go in to try to resolve a loan with a, with a client of theirs, but they don't have to. And most of the people that we deal with have been dealing with the major banks and they all do have to offer that to you. So if it's a small lender or if it's a private party, then they do not have to participate in the program. The, uh, other than that, the exclusion, if you've already been in the foreclosure process with them or you've already received a workout agreement and defaulted, then they may not have to participate even if, even if it is one of the larger servicers. So we, that's where we've sorted through the paperwork with you and had our dialogue and deciphered if that's what you're up against. So we'll figure that out with you. 
But if you're here and you've come through this state program already, they will obviously want to do this with you. And we're here to help you with that process. So part of that Senate bill set up the component of housing counseling because somebody needs to try to put this whole picture together and make sure that match you up with the different programs out there as best we can to figure out what you're going to choose to ask for. If you go in there and you don't know that, how do you get anything resolved? So you need to have someone look at it and say, you know, gosh darn it, with that income, I don't think you're going to be able to work out home retention. You can ask, but I don't know that your chances are going to be that great. Or you look really close, except you have all these unresolved liens that are here. How are you going to resolve them? And we'll talk about these things so that you know when you ask for something, it's feasible. If you go in there, I mean, you can ask for anything. doesn't mean you're going to get it. But you, we'll help you try to ask for what you have a good chance of getting a yes on. It's not guaranteed. We don't know that. And we just know the guidelines and the rules. And then we'll relay those to you. So what we're doing is trying to stay neutral, give you information, make sure you know, OK, if you go through the foreclosure process, this is how it's going to go and who to expect once you get there. And then we've given all this to you in the form of the presentation today because we really know it's a lot and you won't retain it all and we're gonna keep guiding you along the way until we get there. So the bulk of what you had to do as far as the state program, we've already covered a lot of it. You need to know what the housing counseling is going to do for you. What is a foreclosure process and a timeline? We just went through that. If you know who the key players are and how the communication is going to go between them. You know mediation case managers, your facilitator, you and the lender are your key parties. You already got that piece of the puzzle. You know very broad context what workout options are there because we just went through the waterfall. But what applies to you, you don't know yet. So you've got the overview, but to get into the nitty gritty and talk about the specifics, you need to come sit down one on one with us and that's what the next step would be for us to do that. Because of privacy reasons, we are not going to do that today. We can't. We can't talk about everybody's individual circumstances in front of others and we don't have time to be able to do that for everybody in one sitting like this. So when you leave, if you have given us the documentation that we need, you will get the appointment to take that next step and complete the, what we believe is the most valuable part of, of this process to find out, based on your individual circumstances, what's what. So we'll do that with you. And then if we can, we want to attend the resolution conference with you. But we won't be able to do that for everyone. We just don't have enough hours in our day. And we're stretched pretty thin. And there's a lot of you out there that need assistance. So if we can, we will. And if we can't, we'll make sure that you have the directions We've sit, sat down and hashed out what your goal is and what is pertaining to that, the details, what questions you need to ask during the conference based on our discussion. And the different pieces will all be put together for you in one solid puzzle. So we'll hopefully have put it all together. And then you'll be ready. So you'll show up and you'll go in and you'll request what you need to request and ask what you need to ask and hopefully get all the answers or know when you're going to come back and have all the answers if that's how it goes for you. So the results of the media or the resolution conference that used to be called mediation can be multifold. I'm going to kind of breeze past some of these notices that we've included in here for you but that's what they look like. Um, but the results and outcomes of the resolution conference one of three things will happen. You will sit down, you'll go through what you need to go through, you'll have submitted what you need to submit, they'll have reviewed what they need to review, and you're there to get this done. So maybe during that process you got the modification you wanted and you have a trial period plan and you know, okay, I make these payments and they're going to modify my mortgage. Done but you might have more questions that you need to ask surrounding that because the trial period plan doesn't come forward with a whole lot of information sometimes and there's more details that you need. So you may have a trial period plan. You may have a modification finalized already. You may have a short sale transaction. You have an offer and it's been submitted and they've accepted it. You may have said, I'm out of here, give me my deed. I mean, I'll give you the deed, give you the keys, Let me, set me free. 
So you may already have the agreement to do a deed in lieu of foreclosure, and you still want to attend your resolution conference to make sure it's all together and your last questions are answered. So at that resolution conference, you may walk out with an agreement because you've already finished that process and it's laid down and it's done. The servicer receives what their goal is, which is the certificate of compliance. You've received what your goal is, which is some foreclosure avoidance measure, whatever that might be for you, <coughs> and it's done. And it's a perfect world, and it happens. We've seen it. So if it doesn't work in the perfect world, you may have the next best thing, which is, darn it, they didn't get the review done in time. We had to go back and forth with the paperwork a little bit you're self-employed and you had to update that profit and loss statement and darn it another bank statement came in or you know what we kind of changed our mind and wanted to ask for this now instead then you may not have gotten through the process yet and they may offer you a continuance to get through that process so that when you come back you will have hopefully had your decision and know if there's an agreement that's going to be reached so you're still in, in maybe here. We don't know which direction it's going to go yet. You need more time to figure it out. And a lot of people just want to keep going until they find out. So that's where they land. You may be asking for something they're just not willing to give to you. And you, or they may offer you something you're just not willing to take. And you've reached an impasse. So we've had people that come in there asking for a deed in lieu of foreclosure. I really need 90 days to be able to move. I want to see my kids through school. And I don't have the money to relocate. I need $3,000. If you would give me those things, I'll sign on the dotted line and we're on our way. And they'll come back and say, well, you know, you can have the deed in lieu of foreclosure, but that's it. You're not getting anything else. And you say, sorry, I don't have the money to move. I can't sign to that. I can't leave. I don't have the money right now. And you may have reached an impasse. So, or you may have accepted a trial period plan, got in here with the permit modification and the terms were a little different because you didn't have them all in the beginning and you're not willing to accept them anymore. So there's a lot of variables that go into these agreements and you may or may not have all the information. You need to get it before you make your ultimate decision. But the reality is if the servicer has given you the right and you've chosen to, to participate, they, everybody's given their paperwork, including their side. They have their required paperwork they have to turn in. They have to pay their fee. If they've paid the fee, given their paperwork, and shown up and in some measure reviewed you for a foreclosure avoidance measure, they've complied and they will get their certificate of compliance regardless what happens here. So what we have found is they do want to work with you and they are hanging in there with you and attempting to find something or work it to the end until we know we're just not going to get there and it's going to be an impasse. So we don't know what your journey is going to lead you to, but we want to walk on that path with you. So those are the outcomes that you're typically going to find. One of those are what will come out of this for what that's worth. It's a lot of information. I can't give you certainties on what is going to come out of this for you, but I'm really glad that you're trying to find a avoidance to this foreclosure because there's a lot of reasons why you might want to do that, and we'll talk about that one-on-one. -on -one. So we have completed the presentation part. We are going to show you some videos that talk about things to watch out for. And then we are going to call you in the order that you arrived today by number and gather whatever paperwork you've brought and see if we have what we need to get you in so we can talk about your individual situation one-on-one. -on -one. And we are not getting into that situation today. We cannot talk about your story today. We will get into your story in great detail when you arrive. We will have read every page that you have brought to us. We will have spent hours investigating variables surrounding what you've provided to us, and we will talk about that when you're there, one-on-one, -on -one, so that we're talking about what's real for you based on what we've identified and fill in the gaps that you need to help us fill in when we meet, because that's when we need to hear your story, and we need you to share that with us so we understand what's what. But for today, no story. So we're gonna go ahead and show that video for you, 
and then we'll call you by number. We'll go through the paperwork and make sure we have what we need. Hopefully you're going to walk out with the appointment of your assigned counselor. When you come back, do not come to this room. You will not find us here. We will be in the main access office next door. You just come in and they'll have you in our system, your, the date and time of your appoint, appointment with your name, and we'll come get you and plan to spend about 90 minutes to two hours with us at that point because it, it is in depth what we're doing and there's a lot of information for us to cover. So we will do that during that appointment. And if you need to bring additional paperwork back after we're done here today, also bring it back to the main office over there in an envelope addressed to the home ownership center and make sure it's sealed everything at one time and then call us to follow up and make sure that we've received it so that we can let you know what your appointment time is going to be and schedule that with you. And then again 90 minutes to 120 minutes is what you should anticipate spending with us at that point. So if you have not brought any paperwork today after the videos you're done you don't need to come back. Um, you were given some forms when you came in that we do need you to complete and leave with us today because that's our record that you were here. And I know you probably loved this, but if you didn't, we don't know you were here. Would you like to do it again? Or just leave the forms with us would be ideal. So we're going to go ahead and show you that video and then we'll go from there. <laughs>